Praise the Lord, I am Apostle Sean Johnson, and welcome to Get Right With God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much, and I pray that you will allow this word to bless those who will listen and hear. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Again, I am Apostle Sean Johnson, and welcome to Get Right With God. Let's get right into his word. Luke chapter number six, verses number 12 through 16. I'm reading from the NLT, the New Living Translation. Your translation may be different, but the meaning is always the same. Again, that's Luke chapter number six. We're going to glance at verses number 12 through 16. The reading of God's word. One day, soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be apostles. Here are their names. Simon, whom he named Peter, Andrew, Peter's brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and the second Judas, Iscariot, who later betrayed him. The reading of God's word. I would like to minister from the message entitled, Team Jesus. Team Jesus. I love sports. I know you might like sports, but I love I love sports. My wife, Pastor Michelle Irby Johnson, not so much. Dallas Cowboys is her team of choice. And I give her that. I love the Washington football team, formerly the Washington Redskins. I love my team. I love my God. I love my Jesus, my wife, my children, my family, my life. And I really, really, really love sports. I especially love going uh, to the games. You know, when you go get you get your popcorn, you got your jersey on, you got your gear on, and you got your hot dog, you got all your stuff ready, and you go into the stands, and you know you get that experience. It's about the experience. So I just love uh, going to the games, and I like all kinds of sports. I even like watching figure skating. <laughs> I like watching all kinds of sports. And so the other teams I love and that is basketball uh, is the Washington Wizards. I love baseball. I like the Washington Nationals. Soccer. I love uh, the D.C. United and hockey. I love the Washington Capitals. Yes, I cry tears of joy when um, the Washington Capitals won the Stanley Cup trophy. Man, all caps, all in. I just love DC sports. I'm a DC sports fan, as you can tell. All right. So, what catches my attention while watching uh, games is not only the players, it is not only the coaches, the cheerleaders, or uh, the concessions or the crowd. Uh, it's the plays. I like the plays. I like how they strategically, you know, prep and prepare um, the plays before the game and then during the game. They call out these plays and it's amazing to see. So I love the plays. Uh, So before the players can um, get on the field, they must learn the playbook. Before the players can play on the field, they must learn the playbook. The playbook has diagrams with specific instructions about where to step and even how many steps to take on offense or defense. The quarterback has plays on his wrist, all right, on his wristband and calls uh, the number of the play an audible. And so when you do not learn the plays in the playbook, you could miss your assignment and the other team could score. All right, then you might be sidelined for not being successful on the field. 
I remember when um, my wife and I went to uh, a service for one of our brothers, Pastor Stephen Tillett, and um, his son, you know, passed away. And so we went to a service. It was beautiful um, in Annapolis, Maryland. And then they had this, the water and we were sitting on the line. It was cold that day, but we went. And so the person who showed up, who was supposed to, you know, go through the whole program, the whole service, she didn't show up. And so Pastor Tillett came over and said, I'm calling an audible. And my wife was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And so she, he was calling the audible. And I knew what it mean, meant, but my wife didn't know what it meant. And so he had to explain to her that the audible is I'm, I'm putting you in the game, meaning she's up to fulfill the assignment because the other person didn't make it or was running late. And so, uh, so yeah, so the pastor, he called an audible. All right. And so, you know, so Jesus would call audibles and he calls these plays while we're in the game. Amen. And so when you call an audible, it's like it's calling a play um, so, so you can fulfill your assignment. On the other side of the ball, there is team Jesus. Let us go back. Coach Jesus knew their thoughts. He knew their ways. He coached the man with the deformed and crippled right hand. The religious leaders, scholars, and Pharisees had their eye on Jesus to see if he would heal the man, hoping to catch him in a Sabbath. They were ready to throw a, a, a red challenge flag on the play. And Jesus knew what they were up to, and he spoke to the man with the crippled hand. He said, get up and stand here before us. The crippled man got up from the sideline into the game next to Jesus. And Jesus answered team Satan and said, let me ask you something. What kind of action suits the Sabbath best? Doing good or doing evil? Helping people or leaving them helpless? He looked around at each one of them in the eye. And so Jesus got in a huddle with the crippled man and his disciples. And he called an audible. Jesus said to the crippled man, hold out your hand. When you get your healing, I want you to go long. I'm going to throw you the ball with healing power. My God. And so when the crippled man received his miracle with healing power, he was as good as new. It was another victory for Team Jesus. Team Satan was beside themselves with anger. They huddled up with hate and started plotting tricks, trick plays uh, from their demonic playbook on how they might even get even with Team Jesus. Let's look at the text. At that exact moment, Jesus climbed a mountain. He went up a mountain to pray. And why did Jesus choose a mountain to pray? He wanted solitude. He wanted to get away from all the chaos, all the confusion, you know, all of the madness, all that stuff that was going on. You know, he wanted to get away from it. He wanted to be by himself. He wanted to be alone. And so Jesus wanted to find a place to rest during the hellish halftime show. And so the view from the mountain had pan panoramic views. It was beautiful, I'm sure. You know, from Jesus' viewpoint, it was beautiful, you know. But down the mountain, it was craziness. It was foolishness going on, all right? And so it was just Jesus and Jehovah. Moses had a mountaintop experience. Elijah had a mountaintop experience. The mountaintop experience is much more beyond plays and positions. It is a soul sacrificing experience, a soul searching experience, and a soul surrendering experience. Jesus' mountaintop experience is teaching us to not be distracted, to be distracted free. Distracted free from entertainment. Distracted free from computers, distracted free from uh, mobile devices, social media, 
television, etc., whatever it is, Jesus' mountaintop experience is teaching us how to be distracted free. We must learn to break free from everything that distracts us and keeps us from God's presence. Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Like Jesus, we need to di discipline our minds and put into practice the reality of kingdom living that can only be done through kingdom consciousness. Kingdom consciousness is simply stepping up by faith into the kingdom of God and entering in his presence. It is not something that happens physically, but it's a conscious uh, experience based on your decision to use your faith to believe that you are in the presence of God. And Jesus went on a mountain all night long in prayer before God. And when day broke and when day came, he called his disciples. He called his team and selected 12 of them who he also named apostles. Apostles are special messengers who are personally chosen to be representatives for the remnant, which is the body of Christ, the ecclesy of God, the church, and the kingdom of God with the word of God, the Bible. The Bible is the playbook for team Jesus. The Bible is our playbook. We are followers of Jesus and try our best to follow the instructions in the Bible. It is the basic instructions before leaving earth. Many people look at the Bible as some sort of uh, restrictive book of non-fun rules and regulations that if um, if you don't follow it, then, then they think God is mean and he will get you. You know, no, that's the reason why he's given us the word of God. That's the reason why we give it so we can take it and live. It's living, it's breathing. Amen. We have to follow the word of God. Amen. We have to follow every play, every precept, every concept, every word, every verse, every line in the Bible and apply it to our lives. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of souls and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Here's another play to consider. John 8, 31. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are already my disciples. We have to hold on to his teaching. Amen. His principles. His, his parables. And he, then he said, you are already my disciples. When you do your best, when you do your all to follow the instructions found in the Bible, your life will never be the same. Your life will become better and you can be in the game on the field with team Jesus. Teamwork makes the dream work because we are healed. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level, a plain place, a man, the field. And there was a large crowd of his disciples and a vast multitude or a congregation of people from all over Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Amen. So even those who were troubled by unclean spirits, unclean spirits are demons. Amen. They, they were troubled with demons and they wanted to be healed and they were being healed. And so all the people were trying to touch Jesus. Amen. Because healing power was coming from Jesus. And he was healing them. He healed them all. Everybody that was on the scene, everybody who was on the field, he healed them all. Amen. And so there is no sin or transgression, no pain or sorrow, which is outside the healing power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. It was the blood of Jesus that healed our sins. It was the blood of Jesus that freed us from our sins. When Jesus spiked the ball with his blood, 
amen, and his power, it healed, it delivered, it set free. And so Psalm 147.2 says, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Amen. So thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his healing power. Thank God for his healing virtue. Thank God for his divine healing. Amen. It delivers and it sets us free. Amen. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Amen. And, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And he said, let me teach you because I am humble and gentle in heart and you will find rest for your souls. First Peter 2, 22 and 24 says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds, by his stripes, we are healed. If you are going to be on team Jesus, you must know the Lord still performs signs, miracles, and wonders. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up servants, serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. And so on team Jesus, you get the power to heal. It is a gift. Amen. You shall see signs, miracles, and wonders perform. Sign, mir signs, miracles, and wonders follow the apostles because what? They believed. Amen. They had faith. So Jesus healed the man at the pool of Bethesda. He healed the withered hand. He healed the two blind men. He healed a man with leprosy. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. He healed a man with palsy. He healed a man born blind. He healed a woman with the issue of blood. He healed two men possessed with demons. One was dumb. He healed a Canaanite woman's daughter. He healed a boy with a devil, nobleman's son at Capernaum. We have a we have that same power to heal. We have that same power to heal. It is a spiritual gift from the Holy Spirit. It is a supernatural manifestation of the Spirit of God that miraculously brings healing and deliverance to those who suffer with infirmities. On Team Jesus, we are healed. And we are healers. Teamwork makes the dream work because we are blessed. Jesus spoke and said, you're blessed when you've lost it all. God's kingdom is there for the finding. You're blessed when you're ravishly hungry. Then you're really ready for the Messianic meal. You're blessed when the tears flow freely. Joy comes in the morning, my God. And so in other words, count yourself blessed. Jesus was revealing the kingdom and its culture through the Beatitudes. He wants us to live that Beatitude life. Let us go back and break it on down. The poor in spirit. We should be embracing our need for God. The mourners, we should be experiencing God's comfort in our pain. The meek, we, 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 we choose to be humble and submissive over ambition and authority. The hungry for righteousness, we should be longing for God to make all things new. The merciful, we should be extending God's incredible compassion and mercy. Amen. The pure in heart, we should make our hearts fully God's in all we think, say, and do. The peacemakers, we should bring healing, togetherness, unity, and fullness to our world. The persecuted, we must follow Jesus no, no matter what the cause is. Amen. The Bible says that the persecuted are blessed. 
And so we must follow Jesus no matter what the cause is. We are blessed to be compassionate. We are blessed to be courageous. We are blessed to be more than conquerors. Romans 8, 37 through 38 says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through his who, who loved us. Amen. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I consider myself blessed. I consider you blessed. We are all blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and we're blessed when we go. We are not blessed by God because we are good, but because he is good. God has been so good to us. Some of us don't even deserve to be blessed. Amen. Some of us sin so much that the next day you find yourself blessed and you just got to go back to God and say, God, I thank you for being God and blessing me. Let me get my act together. Amen. And so God does not bless mess. God does not bless us just to make us happy. He blesses us to make us to be a blessing. We can be instruments of God's blessing to others. God said, he said, I saved you for a purpose. I saved you to be on team Jesus and be his witnesses in the earth. God blesses us with opportunities to witness to unbelievers. And some of us are missing the opportunities. Amen. Some of us are on the field and not playing our positions. And so what happens if you don't play your position? You get sat down on the bench and you got to wait until you're called back into the game when you're ready. Some of us ain't even ready. Amen. God blesses us with opportunities to witness to unbelievers. Acts 1, 8 says, but you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Sumeria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. On team Jesus, we are blessed and we are a blessing to others. Teamwork makes the dream work because we are loved. Jesus said, you are in good company, my preachers and witnesses. My disciples and apostles have always been treated like this. What are you talking about, apostle? What are you saying? In other words, when we team up with Jesus, we will be treated like the underdog. And some of us have been treated like the underdogs for most of our lives. Amen. And trust me, trust me, I know. I know from experience. I know that there will be opposition. There will be suffering. Amen. You won't have to make some sacrifices. According to 1 Peter 3.14, we are blessed when we suffer for righteousness sake. Let me say it again. We are blessed when we suffer for righteousness sake. Jesus did not want us to worry. He do not. He does not want us to worry. Amen. He don't want us to worry about terror or fear. He don't want us to worry about trials and tribulations. He don't want want us to worry about epidemics and pandemics. Amen. He don't want to want us to worry worry about uh, the vicissitudes of life and the vaccinations that 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 might not even help us. He wants us to trust Him, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge Him and He what shall direct our path. Our task is to tell the truth, even when the truth hurts. We have to tell the truth, even when the truth is not popular. Oh, oh, lights, walls, and keyboard. We have to tell the truth, even when the truth is not popular. We have to be authentic. We have to uh, speak the word, tell the truth. The Lord will send you people who will receive the truth. Amen. Jesus said, love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. 
when someone gives you a hard time, response with the power of prayer for that person. Amen. Don't turn them away. Don't kick them to the curve. Don't don't make them leave your church. Amen. If they hating on you, let them hate. Pray for them. Amen. You got the power to pray for that person. Amen. It might be hard. You might want to wring their neck. You want to might want to steal them right in the face. You might want to just take something and throw it right at them. Amen. I remember when I was growing up and I couldn't fight that well. Um, and my mother used to tell me, look, you got to pick up something, anything. Take a bottle, a brick, something. So I picked up a brick and bust this little kid in the back of his noggin. And he had he had to go get stitches in the back. And he ain't mess with me no more. But then I learned from maturing and growing in God, in my salvation, in my walk with the Lord, that I'm, I got to pray for him. Amen. You got to pray for people who uh, talk about you. Pray for them who come against you. Amen. You got to do the best you can to love your enemies. Amen. Let them bring the best in you, out of you. Let, let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. Amen. If, if someone, you, ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. You know, when you're on, if you're on playing, you see football games and, and, and teams, they have the little rivalries and they, they, they come against each other and on the field and they fuss and argue. They Sometimes they might get in a fight. Amen. But what happened? The next play, they great friends again or they, they back to them normal selves. Amen. You know, sometimes you have people on the field, even if, even in sports, who are Christians and they, they pray for other people. That's what we have to do. We have to position and process ourselves in prayer because we have the power to pray for these people. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the power of prayer for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, gift wrap your best coat and make a present out of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the field to practice the servant life. That's the message translation. I love the message translation because it keeps it real. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the field to practice the servant life. Amen. God is love. And he wants us, his servants to love everyone, even our enemies. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, not hate, not uh, foolishness, not even the enemy, not, not even our opponents. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. To love God is the greatest virtue. To be loved by God is the greatest blessing. Amen. And one of the greatest commandments is to love. So we got to love. Jesus is love. God is love. We have to love as his servants of God. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That's love. Amen. We are imperfect people who are loved by a perfect God. John 15, 13 says, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Because Jesus spiked the ball with his blood we have the testimony that we are loved. We can share his love with the world. We can share his love to the nations. We can share his love in our communities. We can share his love in cities and states and regions. We can share his love in America. Trust me, America needs a whole a lot of love right now. America just need a big old hug because of what we're going through right now. We need to grasp just how loved we really are. At our hardest, God is our hope. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. At our darkest, God is our light. At our weakness or weakest, God is our strength. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? At our lowest, God is our love. Romans 5, 5 says, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Amen. You got to be born again. 
You got to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You got to represent the kingdom. You got to be on team Jesus. You got to uh, rep, amen, your jersey. You got to be in the game, amen, in order for you to understand that the love of God has been placed in your heart. It's been poured inside of your heart by way of the Holy Spirit. Once you're born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. You're baptized with the Holy Spirit. You have the love of God to love people unconditional. Amen. So you have this Holy Spirit that gives you this love. It's been given to us. Amen. That's a blessing. He delights in us. He delights in our worship. He delights in our praise. He delights Amen. In our prayer time, he delights um, in, in, in how he made us and created us and, and, and placed us into um, where we need to be so we can be in the game to fill our first assignments. Why? Because he loves us. He loves us. As I close, why did Jesus choose this team of 12 apostles? Why not five or eight or 10? The answer is because there are 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus said that at the renewal of all things, when he sits on the glorious throne, the 12 apostles will sit on those 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus chose to establish his base and a new team in Capernaum. Amen. And so Jesus is with us. Jesus is on our side. Jesus is fighting for us. Jesus is sitting on the throne and he wants us to know that we have access to all things, even his kingdom, amen? And so he chose these 12 apostles. He chose the disciples to do the work, to do greater works, amen? To fulfill the assignments that was in their lives. And so Jesus, he wants to know that he is sitting on the throne and he established these 12 apostles. So they can be on the be at the end, be on the throne with him, by him, next to him, so they can un, they can judge these twelve tribes of Israel, Amen. And so these twelve apostles, they were sitting on his throne, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, Amen. So Jesus chose to establish his base, establish his team. Choose he chose twelve apostles who were uh, the first leaders of the church the first leaders of the ecclesia. He chose 12 apostles who would uh, serve as the core of the future kingdom. He chose 12, but he chose you too. 12 is the number of governing authority. The church became a spiritual version of Israel. Read Matthew 24. James refers to Christians as the 12 tribes scattered abroad, all right? And so it was uh, fitting that the, the, the new Israel be led by 12 representatives of Christ, the 12 apostles. Our representative is Jesus. He's our Messiah and he's our head coach, amen? If Jesus has called and chose you, chosen you, called you for a purpose to fulfill his great commission, you must be true to the game. You must stay on his team. You must seek like him, serve like him, suffer like him. You must do everything in the power of the Holy Ghost that has been given freely to you to seek to save the lost. Luke 19, 20 said, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. And so God has placed a mandate on our lives so we can stand, stay active in our assignments. Let me say that again. God has placed a mandate over our lives so we can stay active in our assignments. You're, you you are anointed for this. You are called to do this. You have been chosen to do this. Amen. You know how when they do a draft, you know, they draft people into the NFL 
and um, using football as reference. They draft people to the NFL, amen, and they have their assignments, amen. That means they train all their life. They, they've done everything they can do, amen. You've trained all your life. You've done all you can do. You've read his word. You've prayed. You've been faithful over a few things, and God has called you and chosen you for such a time as this to fulfill the assignment that's on your life. You are anointed for this, amen. On Team Jesus, go and make disciples of all nations. On Team Jesus, teach and transform lives. On Team Jesus, go and, and, and help the homeless, help the hopeless, help the, the, the helpless. On Team Jesus, you are his number one draft pick from the very foundation of the world. You were drafted from your mother's womb. You were drafted when you made the decision to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. He has drafted you for such a time as this. I cannot say enough. He has drafted you for a purpose. You have made the decision to join Team Jesus, but the enemy is trying his best with everything in his power to keep you from winning. He is trying everything in his power to keep you from serving. He is trying everything in his power to keep you from doing what you've been called to do. But we already have the victory over the enemy. We have victory over team Confucius. We have victory over team Buddha. We have victory over team Catholic. We have victory over team Mormon. You have, we have victory over team Muslim. We have victory over team Antichrist. We have victory over team uh, false prophet, a uh, false Satan. We have victory over team Satan. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. First John 5, 4 says, for everyone who has been born to God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, amen? Our faith has taken us to our favor, amen? We don't have to fear because we have faith, amen? We have faith to move mountains. We have faith to do what the Lord has called us to do. We have the victory by way of faith. We win on team Jesus. We win on team Johnson. We win on the field. We win in the game. We win in the end. There was a Super Bowl called the kingdom. And the Lord wants us to be part of it. The Lord has our new championship T-shirts and hats and caps. And he is waiting to give us his crowns. Now that we are free agents, whom the son has set free is free indeed. We are free and free agents. He is offering us a deal to accept the new terms of his contract called everlasting life, which expires indefinitely. Amen. You have a contract. You can have a contract with Jesus. Sign with his blood that will guarantee, guarantee you everlasting life. Why? Because you are his top pick. We all are his top picks. That's why he's given us salvation. It's free. So let us live like we are his top picks. Teamwork makes the dream work because we are healed. Teamwork makes the dream work because we are blessed. Teamwork makes the dream work because we are loved. We have what it takes, people of God, because it is inside of us. Amen. We have potential because it's inside of us. We have the kingdom because it's inside of us. We have a future and a hope because it's inside of us. As his disciples, we represent the kingdom of God on the winning side with team Jesus.
John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You could be on team Jesus today. Would you like to give your life to Jesus Christ? If so, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent. Please forgive me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Baptize and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me how to live this life on team Jesus. Seal my faith and my life in your eternal kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to welcome you to the family of God. To advance in God's kingdom, you must build your relationship with Jesus Christ and let sinners know that they must get right with God. A few announcements and I'll be finished. For prayer requests or to connect with my global ministry, Apostolic Grace Evangelistic Fellowship, where we are winning souls for God's kingdom, please call 240-595-1365, email info at agefellowship.org, or visit us online at www.agefellowship.org. If you seek to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Kingdom Covenant Bible Institute is your home where we are teaching and training disciples to get a spiritual education and have a solid foundation. Amen. And so to register for courses or to get more information about Kingdom Covenant Bible Institute, email us at KCBI, Kingdom CBI, Kingdom CBI at yahoo.com. That's Kingdom CBI at yahoo.com or go to www dot kingdom cbi dot org that's www dot kingdom cbi dot org if you would like to give for the gospel go to www dot age fellowship dot org forward slash give your gifts will help me and my team to share the gospel message of the kingdom globally follow me on facebook twitter and instagram at Dr. Sean PJSR. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Dr. Sean PJSR. I would love to connect with you and be your friend on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Get Right What God is on Sensational Sounds Radio every Tuesday at 5 o'clock p.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To listen to the broadcast, go to www.sensationalsoundsradio.net. Let me put my radio voice on. www.sensationalsoundsradio.net. Let us close out in word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much, God, for this word. I thank you so much, God, for helping us to see who Jesus is to us and how he's called and chosen us for such a time as this, for a purpose, to fulfill every assignment on our lives for the kingdom of God. Thank you that we have access to the kingdom and we can share Jesus's love with the world. We can continue to build and make disciples of all nations in the earth. And God, we thank you that we're on the winning side. We have the victory because we are on team Jesus. This is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Check out Grace Point TV official with Pastor Michelle Irby Johnson and Life Matters with Michelle TV official on YouTube. That's Grace Point TV official with Pastor Michelle Irby Johnson 
and Life Matters with Michelle TV Official on YouTube. My wife will bless your entire, your whole life with the word of God. Make sure you, you know, you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell to get notifications. Subscribe. Click the bell and get notifications, even on my channel. All right. Subscribe and get notifications. Thank you for tuning in to Get Right With God. I am Apostle Sean. Souls must be saved. Lives must be changed. Do not wait. Do it now. God bless.